Hey everybody, it's Michael Martin. Thanks for being here. So today I want to talk about, you know, what happens when your trading style and the market place, like the one we're in now, aren't compatible, at least in the short run. And so this is an important lesson to learn because, you know, most folks will find themselves in a in a spot where they trade one asset class within one to particular style, day trading, swing trading, whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, and then have a certain holding period, right? So at that point in time, you might find that the last several trades that you've put on have turned into hopefully small losers, not big ones, and you're you're frustrated, right? Which is understandable because you're doing this to make money. You understand that there's a frequency with which you'll lose, and those losses will have a certain magnitude all added up uh, in what we call a drawdown. And so this is an important lesson. I didn't, I didn't learn this one as quickly as I had hoped when I was coming up. And this is also true for bigger traders who have millions of dollars of you know, lines of credit, so to speak, from their risk manager. And that is you know, learning to sit on your hands, basically. The, if you can't learn to sit on your hands, and know like if the markets have turned in this particular season, then you really have to learn another trading strategy, right? So you, it talks about experimentation, right? You can back test and you can simulate for sure, but then you have to step in with some real money and see how it feels. And it's gonna feel, again, the word that everyone uses, it feels weird, which is a way of saying, it's new to me, I'm kind of bringing in the data, I'm feeling it, I'm taking note of things, right? Because typically, our trading strategies are an expression of ourselves, right? It's almost like an, being an artist. It's, it's who you are. It's your relationship with the marketplace and the instruments that you trade. Now, all of a sudden, it's like being in a personal relationship and taking it in a different direction. There's lots of ways that you can go with that. Some people go and, you know, want to have these things where they're married, but they're not monogamous. They want to, you know, then you're dating and then you start living together, right? So this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Sometimes the stakes are, are get higher and you have to understand, you know, what it all means to you ahead of time. If you jump in without thinking about it, you can get results that you might not be comfortable with and it's a little harder to unwind, right? So same thing with the marketplace. Once you're into a certain type of behavior, and you're used to that behavior, there's times when the markets don't care about <laughs> your trading strategy and, you know, momentum doesn't kick in. There's, you know, false starts. There's really no follow through. And so if you need that or have those attributes or characteristics to be, well, you know them to be integral to how you succeed, right? Now, all of a sudden, that aspect is missing from the market. And there's nothing you can do to manifest it. So what do you do? Well, I would stick to your trading rules, for one. Two, if you're in a drawdown, consider taking haircut on your capital to trade even smaller, maybe even less frequently. Um, make sure, of course, that the trades that you're doing um, aren't really one big trade, right? I hear from people who are like, yeah, I've got Russell 2K, I've got the NQs, and I've got the E-minis. Right, and so I get it. You have you have three dis different instruments, but they're so highly correlated. You know, you might find that you have positions in each one is really one big trade. So that can help you minimize risk too. Is to reduce your exposure to highly correlated you know trades because they can all act as one. I think you probably have seen that or at least heard about it. So. How do you develop a new strategy? Well, you have to experiment, right? And that can start with a simulator. Uh, a couple of them, I don't have any financial connection to them. And, you know, the better ones obviously come at a premium. Um, so the question is, how do you want to test? Do you want to test at the portfolio level? Do you want to test at the instrument level? At the portfolio level, you're really talking about, you know, having several positions on at the same time. You're not day trading, right? Right. So you're taking that risk home overnight, over the weekend. And so those securities in the portfolio have to be marked to the market, right? To, to measure where your equity's at. Then you're also looking for newer signals, right? 
So this helps you, you know, manage several stock trades or commodities trades at the same time. Mark them to the market to kind of see how is the portfolio behaving before you either take winners or you get stopped, right? And you can get stopped with winners too, right? So how does that all work? So depending on what your needs are, there are some trading platforms that have simulators built in where you can test a strategy, but only on one instrument at a time. At the portfolio level, you're really looking at having several instruments at the same time, and you're typically taking it home overnight. You know, I suppose you could simulate trading baskets as well. Um, so I know if you looked at any of the, the, the online brokers, not singling any of them out, they have simulators where you can, you know, put the ticker in and simulate, you know, how, how it would have behaved, especially if you're looking at intraday stuff, that can be helpful. But, you know, the, 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 there's some caveats there. And one is, like, I think one particular uh, broker only lets you go back two years. Well, that's great, but it's not enough time to really know, like, how would you have done when markets were tough? Right, one of the the tougher periods in time when the whole market was kind of sour, like what was it, oh seven, oh eight, that kind of stuff, when there was the subprime morass, um, emphasis on the sub second syllable, and so you would want it to me. I'd want to test my strategies in the most arduous circumstances, right? Because then I kind of know my metal, right? I can kind of figure this out. The ones that you can use at the portfolio level come with other characteristics. For example, they're not tied to a broker-dealer, so they come with some basic data so that you could run the models, but the data is old data, right? It's, it's obsolete, and it's probably five years of data, but it helps you at least know how to move around right? the, the engine. But typically, you'd have to buy them. There's two that I know about. Trading Blocks is one, and that's spelled B-L-O-X, Trading Blocks, B-L-O-X, and Mechanica, which is the more recent version of what used to be known as Trading Recipes, right? So that, that has evolved from Trading Recipes to Mechanica, same group of people, and then there's Trading Blocks. Both of those simulators run, you know, they can run into the thousands of dollars. You own a license. And you need to also have a data source. So you'd have to go to a place like csidata.com or I just, and there's a lot of others. I don't have any financial relationship with them. So you can, you can do that um, and take a look at, of course, minimum 10 years, right? Because if we're in 2023, you go back to 2013, what was going on in the marketplace during that period of time, Right. So you might want to also consider, again, at the portfolio level, how did your thought process work at times when they didn't have zero interest rates? Because some of you who are doing this don't really know or have seen a lot of adversity. And to me, you want to be battle tested. And if you can't go back in time, you can kind of simulate what your ideas that are working today, how they would have done in the past. So... <clears throat> that's that's the deal there. It's obviously you get a monthly subscription to the data. Um, then you would connect, you know, the, the database, if you will, to the simulator so that every day it, the, the database effectively would update, right? And they're basically ASCII files. So it's text. It's very, there's, there, there's a lot of data, but the files, it's not like video files where you could have like a eight gigabyte high def video and then you program in your rules and you hit go. And then you can Monte Carlo the aspect of it as well. Because typically, if you're going to trade and look and simulate, say, for 10 years, you're not really starting on January 1st, right? So you want to Monte Carlo the thing and say, hey, you know, a good example that I use is what happens if you started your simulation on October 1st, 1987, or you, your start date was November 1st, 87? even trading like an S&P strategy. Obviously, it's a very, very big difference in that you had Black Monday that happened in between those two dates. So depending on your start date and your trading strategy, your results could be very, very different. So sometimes you get lucky. That's not something that you can control. 
But if you simulate, you can kind of see what happens, say, for example, if someone started investing, say, October 1st, 1980, and they were able to catch a good chunk of the bull market from the early 80s up until the crash, then they had the drawdown. What impact did that have on their capital if they stayed the course over another 10 years, right? So that's where the Monte Carlo comes in is that can, it shows you sit different situations by varying the start date using the same trading rules. So again, it really depends obviously what you can afford, um, but what is it that you wanna do with your money? Are you gonna hold yourself out to the public? Do you wanna do this in a very, very scientific st standpoint? Again, knowing that even the simulators and the results that you get, I, can, I have, you know, tests, you know, I've used these things so I can put them up and show them to you uh, and some of the stuff, the data that you get and how important that is to your decision-making process. But I think it also depends on how professional do you want to be because a lot of these things you can use with clients. So for example, if you're starting out, you know, you can use the hypothetical to say, hey, here's my trading strategy. And if you started with 10,000, 50K, here's how you would have done. Here's how I'm doing in real time. You know, if you're working at a bigger place, you might have programmers in-house that are doing this for you already. So you don't have your own, you have your own proprietary trading um, engine that can back test anything. So um, I know there's a lot available online. I don't have experience with that. I only have um, experience with the bigger ones, the more institutional ones. And like anything in life though, folks, you get what you pay for. So when you say like, oh, I'm looking at this, it's too cheap, or I'm looking at this and it's too high in price, it's not worth it. Before you say something like, think about what results you want to get. Because if you, again, you always get what you pay for. It's typically true in almost every area in life. And so with the more sophisticated simulators, you'll get lots of good feedback. You'll get, you know, what's your sharp ratio? What's your Sortino? What's your biggest drawdown? How long did it last? What's the compounded annual growth rate? Um, what's the expected value of a trade? Because they can see it's simulating your trading. So you get the percent winners, you get the percent losers, you get your average win, you get your average loss. It'll come up also and show what was your largest win what was your largest loss? And so, you know, in all that simulation, in that simulation, that data is very, very valuable, especially if they help you calculate the expected value of a trade, right? Because now you can foresee a lot of that stuff and put yourself in that situation. Okay, if I was in, you know, uh, 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 you know a 7% drawdown that lasted, you know, four months, you know, how did I feel during that? What did, I, what did that, how was I prompted to act? What did I think, right? So this is a this is the this is important stuff because for discretionary traders who aren't following a systematized, you know, mechanical set of rules that you would run through a simulator, the simulator would start running, say after you know six o'clock Eastern. I think the data gets updated like four p.m. Eastern or six p.m. Eastern. Um, then you run the model and it gives it spits out what the trades are for the next day based on the universe of securities that you're tracking right in in the database so all the decision making is done as well as where are the protective stops to be placed so if you have indecision about things or you find yourself second guessing yourself what you know i don't i think you're always going to second guess yourself systems don't remove emotion the question is do you have the discipline to follow right because you're still going to feel, not feel good if you lose money. And you're probably going to feel amped if you're making money. So I know folks like to say systems remove emotion. They don't. You're a human being. You can learn. What you can learn is to have the strong feelings, but not take the actions that would subvert what you your goals are. That's true. But unless you're catatonic or you're smoking 86% THC Percy wax <laughs> in some kind of <laughs> vaping situation and you it's impossible for you to feel any feelings you know that's a whole other discussion of why you'd be doing that while you're trading um 
but the, the system can help you do the calculations if math isn't your strong point. It can it obviously helps you calculate where your protective stops are so that you know where to get out. There's no ambiguity. You can vary position size, right? To, to usually conjugate that to the drawdown. That's typically what you'd want to do. If you're not comfortable, if you like the results, but you're not comfortable with the drawdown, you typically have to trade it smaller. You can sit and change all the different securities to get better results in your simulation, but it's not predictive. You might do better than what the simulation is because randomly the market's going to show you a better environment going forward than what you were able to backtest on. So that's why if I look at backtests, because think about it from an allocator standpoint, you've never seen a backtest you didn't like. Why? Because people could sit and, and, and data farm and data mine um, and cherry pick stuff and make the backtest look good. But, you know, you, you want to really backtest your stuff through the most arduous times and then probably times it by two because random things are going to happen and there's nothing predictive that from the backtest that things can't get worse. You see, you could actually get worse. So that's why I would get into looking at the Monte Carlo just to give me an idea and understand, okay, well, the idea has merit. It's, it's made money in the past more times than not. Net, net, I'm a winner for having followed these rules but it's not predictive. It can't isolate me from a drawdown. The magnitude and the duration of the drawdown in real time might be greater than the worst from the Monte Carlo simulations, right? And that all comes down. The simulator also gives you year by year performance and it tells you what instruments were attributable or where your gains came from, right? Which, which instruments attributed to the gains? Where did you lose money? Right, so then you can go back and study that and say, okay, well, maybe I need a different set of rules, right? Because the characteristics of the nature of the markets, that, like say in the metals, they have different characteristics than say the grains and oil seeds. So you might have a slightly different model in terms of position sizing perhaps or entries for one group than another, but yet everything is systematized. There's no you know, shooting from the hip or trying to do be a discretionary chart reader. So that can be very, very helpful in helping you design and develop your emotional system because you can look back and see how your ideas would have done. Um, in my experience, when you run the simulations, they don't typically turn on a dime. They, they, they can ebb and flow, and sometimes the expected value of a trade can change over time, right? But that's because they're basically averages. And so you can isolate and look at certain windows of time and say the expected value of a trade was here and then it actually improved. Because when you see everything run through a system, they're going to show you the expected value of a trade across all the trades you've made, right? So again, it's an average. There are periods of time where, you know, even in my own trading where the expected values doubled over certain windows, like in the mid 2000s when China was buying a lot of those commodities, we're just in the right place at the right time. The trading rules didn't change, but you know, accuracy rates that were 30 were going to 60 and winners were going from four to six times the losers, sometimes eight times the losers. So you'll run into hot markets for sure, but at the same time, you're gonna run into markets that are a little cool to who you are and what it is that you're trying to do. How you handle that emotionally, to me, and behaviorally predicts where you end up, right? So you have to have all those rules, you have to simulate. And again, if you don't wanna do all that, then you have to learn to sit on your hands because what you're doing now with what you do know how to do isn't working, right? So that's gonna require some growth. I give you some examples of how to, how to do that, how to test new ideas. Um, hopefully they'll resonate with you um, but it's all good stuff. You know, if, if nothing else, you learn a lot about yourself in the process. And to me, that's the key, you know, to speculating and, and trading very, very well is to know how, how are you going to behave when certain situations come knocking on your door? Anyway, folks, I've been here for a while. I appreciate you being here. Thanks very much for watching the show. Please like, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, hey everybody, thanks for being here. Please take a minute, like, and subscribe to the show. You could also leave a comment. I don't have all the answers, so it's good to get some feedback. Also, if you would like to support the show, check out the links below. You can get the free audiobook of The Inner Voice of Trading. 
uh, and also information about the course that I teach with Victor Sperandio. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.